What's up, buddy? How you doing? I'm good. How are you? Good to talk to you again. Good. You too, brother. How are you? I'm good. So, guys, uh, Joe McDonough here, joined by BKFC President David Feldman for MyMMANews.com. Uh, David, how are you doing on Fight Week? I'm doing great, man. We're just gearing up. We're doing a lot of the uh, pre-fight festivities now. Picture taking interviews, live radio shows here to tell. Um, people are pretty excited around here, although we can't have... Uh, you know, kind of a full attendance. We are allowed to have about twelve to fifteen hundred people in the building, which make uh, for a great ambiance for the fight. Absolutely, and you know, as the president, you know, you're busier during the week than you are on fight night. I'm assuming. You know, what's the busiest time of the of fight week for you? And I'm sh assuming that on fight night, it's more of just sitting back and enjoying the show. You know, I got to be honest with you, man. I, I have just an amazing team now. It's, it's unbelievable what the pandemic did for us and to assemble the team as we talked about before. It's been fantastic, man. I'm not, I mean, I'm, I'm working, believe me, I'm putting deals together and working, but my team is just working hard. I'm not really doing too, too much more than I normally do. I'm just, you know, I'm here, I'm doing interviews. I'm, I'm actually, this week I'm visiting a lot of police stations and firefighters and giving them tickets to come out to the event because it's a 9-11 commemorative event that we're doing. So that that's really what my week consists of this week. Absolutely, and, and speak more on you know holding that event in that honor, you know, and, and giving police officers and firefighters uh, tickets to attend. I love it. It's just you know it, it, every time we talk about it, we we partnered up with the Travis Manion Foundation. Travis Manion Foundation is a foundation that supports the military, uh, fallen victims, people that are having issues, current current military, former military. Anybody that has some problems with the military, they have, they have about 500,000 people in their organization right now. It's a great organization. Travis Mannion is a, is a Marine that, that got killed in the line of duty. He actually, um, he was a team leader. He went out in front of his team um, and got shot up by snipers and, and died and saved all, every, everyone else on his team. No one else on his team died. So mm -hmm. it's a tremendous kind of person to put together or to have an organization built around him and to commemorate his life and, and what they're doing in his honor. So it's great to be partnered with them, coupled with the fact that we're just being able to support the, the, the first responders. And I know that a lot of the police are getting a, getting a, a raw deal right now for some actions of a few bad apples, but at the same time, it doesn't ruin everything that happened. It doesn't, doesn't, whatever your belief is on what happened on 911, it doesn't matter. What matters is innocent men and women went into that building to save people in the burning buildings, to save innocent people as well mm -hmm. from an attack that we had, whether it was a conspiracy, whether it was attack, it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. So we're going to honor them on Friday night, and it's great. We're going to raise the money for some 9-11 organizations, and it's just going to be a great event. It's going to be a really feel-good event on top of probably one of our most evenly matched flight cars we've ever had. Absolutely. And uh, that, that's a great honor that's, that's being posed this week. And, you know, um, you know, we, we've heard a lot about UFC, Bellator, all those protocols that they're doing. What, what is Bare Knuckle doing for protocols for, you know, take me through what fighters have to do um, on their week. You know, do they get how many times do they get tested and all of that? Well, they get tested twice. They get tested once at home, and then once when they get here, they're going to get tested on uh, actually tomorrow. They're going to get uh, – we do a different type of test. We do a, actually a blood lab test. Mm -hmm. So they'll be sent uh, – that will be out tomorrow. The, the results come back Friday afternoon. They'll be in the hotel the whole time. And then we're just going to bring them over to, to, the, uh, to the fight. Um, last fight, we did the same thing, um, except we did nasal – nasal swabs and we had no uh positive tests and we're just hoping for the same tomorrow um every fighter will get their temperature checked as well every fan that comes into the building will get their temperature checked they all have to be you know wearing their masks around people right now so mm -hmm. you know we're, we're doing everything we can you know obviously um everything that that all the protocols that are handed down above us and more florida is a state where you don't have to wear your mask everywhere so i mean you know we are following and going above and beyond on a lot of the different guidelines that are handed to us. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, most shows that are going on, you know, right now can't have any fans. You know, you're allowed, like you said, you're having 1,100, uh, 1, um, you know, a smaller amount than you'd usually have. But, you know, how special is it to have even just that minimal amount of fans in the building? You know, it's, it, it's feel good, right? It gets the fighters. You know, I, I talk to a lot of fighters that, 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 that fought in different bubbles and it, it's great it's great that those organizations did that and the UFC was the first one to be able to do that and hats off to them for, for leading the way that's great what we're doing is that by having fans here it makes them feel good more because they're hearing people cheer for them and you know that's what drives their adrenaline mm -hmm. 
number one. And number two is the fact that we get to have fans come out. They get a little bit more of a sense of normalcy back when they get to come out to an event that they were able to come to in the past. And, and you know, they, they hit a brick wall and they couldn't do it for six months. And now they can come out and, and enjoy some live entertainment in a very safe setting, social distance, masks on, temperature checks, the whole nine yards. So we're doing everything we can that way as well. And, you know, we're just glad to be back in action, getting these fighters fighting and getting the fans being able to come back. Even even if it's minimal, it's better than not. Absolutely, and, and everyone needs that sense of normalcy. Um, and, you know, one guy that's fighting this weekend making his debut, uh, Tiago Pitbull Alves, um, you know, he really has the chance to become the star of Bare Knuckle. I mean, that starts with this weekend. You know, what do you see happening for him? Yeah, you know what? I mean, he trains harder than anybody I know. It's great to have Tiago on. He's a big part of the ATT. And um, with him and Dan Lambert, the owner the owner of ATT, and, you know, they just started – actually, I just found out today that I was doing an interview and Tiago was doing it with me, and we just found out that ATT actually is starting a bare knuckle boxing division. Yep, he, told, their, me, he told me that today. This is awesome. I was like, holy shit, that's <laughs> awesome. So it's great to have someone like him. And he's someone that's re- – he's, re- he's rejuvenated, right? He got tired of – doing the same old thing and look he had some really tough fights but he got he got some rest he got some rejuvenation and now he just concentrates on punching so i'm looking for big things from tiago but you know we have julian lane and stuff that stepped up to fight him in the replacement for the main event and julian is a veteran of five or six bare knuckle fights i believe mm-hmm. at this time and he's just um you know he's gonna come out banging i, I mean i think I, I don't think it lasts long I think it lasts about two rounds, and I think it's going to be an absolute war for the amount of time it lasts. Absolutely, and I think we're all looking forward to that. Um, you know, uh, Tiago's new training partner, uh, Paige Van Zant. you just signed her. We talked the day uh, day after it was signed, but, you know, is there any new um, movement in, in when Paige will be? You know, you told me she was going to be commentating. Um, you said maybe in October would be the plan to get her in, in the ring. You know, has, has any of that moved forward? Yeah, it, it looks like we're going to um – have her fight in, in November. Our husband got was, was tested positive for COVID. Mm-hmm. She tested negative. So if she does come up with a positive result, then we may have to pivot and move it to December or maybe even January. But right now we're looking at right around the November 14th time frame for Paige Van Zandt to make her debut with that novel. Awesome. And, you know, this weekend, is there, you know, we know the main event, we know, you know, we're all excited for it, but there, for you, for the president of the promotion, what is the top under the radar fight for Bare Knuckle 12? I think it's Joe Elmore versus Tom Shove. I think that's going to be uh, – there's two fights. There's Joe Elmore versus Tom Shove, and there's Abby Velasquez versus Reggie Barnett. Now, I don't know how that – you know, it, it, it could go either way. In, in the Reggie Barnett-Abby uh, fight, they could dance a little bit. They're both pretty decent boxers. But I think Joe Elmore versus Tom Shove is, is fight of the night all over Awesome. And, and you know, this weekend, this Friday, you're competing with Bellator and LFA. You know, last time we spoke, you know, when, when you signed Tiago and when you signed Paige, you, you, you made the announcement, you know, you're part of the big promotion. You can sign anyone. You know, are you going to be keeping track of the numbers this weekend and see how you guys do against Bellator and against LFA? Yeah, I mean, you know, I, I mean, I don't know how to measure LFA because they're on, they're on fight pass, I believe, right? Mm-hmm. So I don't know how you, how you even get their numbers. Yeah. Um, you know, we're not in competition with anybody. It was good to see that we did do good numbers against those organizations, but we're not in competition with anybody. We, we launched our own app. It's the Bare Knuckle TV app. It's at BK, uh, TV app.com. If you can put that out, I really appreciate Absolutely. that. That would be great. Um, we already have uh, north of 25,000 subscribers. We just actually officially launched and starting to subscribe people a couple weeks ago and just really started advertising it heavily this week. So I think at 25,000 subscribers right now, I think we could end up somewhere around 100,000 subscribers going into our first event with an app, um, a, a paid app. I think it would be a phenomenal, phenomenal moment for us. Absolutely. And, and do you ever just kind of look back you know, um, and, and look at where you are now from where you started and just kind of wow yourself to how far Bare Knuckle has come? Yeah, you know what? I, I, I don't a lot because we're moving so fast, but today I actually did. I, I walked to the beach really early this morning because I didn't sleep that good last night. And I just walked to the beach. And I'm like, <laughs> shit, man, where did this really take us, man? Look at where it took us. We're, on, we're doing a great event in, in Daytona Beach. We're signing some of the biggest names. And you know what it is, man? I even put a post out on my personal Facebook today just – just thankful, man. I got I got such a tremendous team. I got so much support. You know, you have a lot of haters and people that don't want to see you do do good, but that's going to happen in in anything that you choose to do in life. But yeah, man, it's 
it's tremendous. I mean, two years, right? I mean, a little more than two years. We were off for a couple months because of COVID. So about two years in business. And even as we talked about, look, I know I'm not Bellator or UFC yet. I know, I know that. But to even be talking the same sentence with them at this stage, two years in, it's a very, very huge compliment for us. Absolutely. And, and you know, Last thing for me is, you know, uh, two other guys that are, you know, big names in bare knuckle, uh, Jason Knight and Artem Lobov. Is, you know, is there any time frame on when they'll be back? Um, yeah, we're going to be, um, we actually just talked to uh, Jason. Jason actually had an in, a hand injury from something else that he was doing. Um, he should be, be able to talk in about two or three weeks on a targeted time frame for him to come back. And Artem's been working on a lot of things. He just started training again, so we're actually going to pick up talks with him again as well. So, you know, we'll see what's next for him. We just signed a couple of big uh, UK guys that are really big into paranormal fighting over there in the UK. And, um, you know, we'll, we'll see where it goes from there. And, and last time we spoke, you know, you had you had put an emphasis on um, female fighters. You said that Paige was the, the beginning of really focusing on signing more female fighters. You know, um, can you give us any hints on who's next? Um, we're talking to a lot of them right now. And I just don't want to, you know, there's a lot of organizations vying for some of these free agents. So I can't really put the names out there. Mm-hmm. But in the, in, the, in the next couple of weeks, and I know I said that last time, but we also... You know, the deal has to be right. So in the next couple of weeks, I'm sure we're going to make some announcements of, of one or at least two male, very um, large free agents, or maybe they're not even free agents yet, but they will be after the next fight. Mm-hmm. And then um, some of these women. So, you know, I'll definitely let you know in the next couple of weeks. Awesome. Well, David, thank you very much. We're all looking forward to a couple of nights from now to see uh, the debut of Tiago Alves on Bare Knuckle 12. I appreciate it. Thank you. Awesome.